All right, we're going to go over a problem from section 1.7, problem number 11. It says find f plus g, f minus g, f g, and f over g, and to determine, determine the domain for each function. And we're told f of x is 4x plus 1, g of x is x plus 2. So the first thing we're going to find is f plus g of x and that is very simple all we do is add the two functions together so we're going to now I'm going to use parentheses here when I write it and you'll see why I'm doing this when we do the second problem for the first problem it's not entirely necessary but for the second problem it does make a difference so f of x is 4x plus 1, g of x is x plus 2, and all we're going to do is combine like terms. So 4x and x gives us 5x, 1 plus 2 gives us 3. All right, so let's go back here and type that in. 5x plus 3. Check that. It says good answer. Now, uh, the second part it's going to ask is what is the domain of f plus g? Notice that um, our answer was 5x plus 3. As long as you don't have a variable inside of a radical or in the denominator, then your domain is always going to be all real numbers, and all real numbers are written like this. Negative infinity to positive infinity. That means you can plug in whatever you want and you'll get the correct answer and it's going to give us nice work for that so the second part is f minus g of x so let's go back to our whiteboard here and what we have to do now is f of x minus g of x so it's essentially going to look exactly the same as f of x plus g of x except instead of this plus sign you're going to put a minus sign so 4x plus 1 minus and then in parentheses x plus 2 now what we have to do in the second set of parentheses is take the opposite of each thing there so the positive x is going to become a negative x and the positive 2 is going to become a negative 2 so what we're going to wind up with is, let's say, the 4x minus x and plus 1 minus 2. Combine like terms, we get 3x minus 1. All right, let's go ahead and type that in for our answer. So 3x minus 1, and once again, it's going to say nice work. And it's going to ask us for the domain one more time. Recall, there are no variables in a radical or in the denominator, so all real numbers and all real numbers are represented as going from negative infinity to positive infinity. Enter correct. Next, it says f times g of x. So let's go back to our whiteboard once again. And what we have to do this time is f of x times, notice it's a black dot to represent multiplication, g of x. So this time, parentheses once again, 4x plus 1, parentheses, x plus 2. Since we have to multiply two binomials, we're going to use the FOIL method. So first, f represents first, 4x times x is 4x squared, outer is represented by the O, 4x times 2 is 8x, inner is represented by the I, so 1 times x is x, and L represents last, 1 times 2 is 2. All we have to do is once again combine like terms, so 4x squared plus 8x and x is 9x, and we have a 2. So let's go ahead and type that in. 4x squared plus 9x plus 2. 
All right, so 4x, and we have to press, it's kind of off to the side here, but you'll see um, these panels up here, one of them says superscript, and that's going to give us an exponent option here. So 4x plus 9x plus 2. All right, nice work. Once again, domain, all real numbers. All real numbers are represented by negative infinity to positive infinity. Enter. All right, now lastly, f over g of x. So let's do that. f over g of x means to take f of x and divide it by g of x. Now, this is pretty simple at first, and then there's one little tricky part at the end. So we just put f of x on the top, 4x plus 1, and put g of x on the bottom, x plus 2. Now, notice that this is different from all our other answers significantly because this time we have a variable in the denominator. If you have a variable in the denominator, then there's going to come a situation where you can plug in a number and you can get zero in the denominator, which we do not want. So in order to determine what number that is, we take the denominator, let's write that down here, x plus 2, and we set it equal to zero. We want to solve this equation, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, and you get x equals negative 2. So that means if I take negative 2 and plug it into this equation, I'm going to get 0 in the denominator, which is no good. So our answer looks like 4x plus 1 over x plus 2, provided that x does not equal negative 2. So x can be anything except negative 2. Now, let's see how we plug this into the answer. So first, we're going to type in 4x plus 1 over x plus 2. All right, in order to do that, I'm going to write that in as a fraction. So 4x plus 1, and then divided by x plus 2. All right, now, domain. This time, the domain is not going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity because x cannot be negative 2. Now, notice that there is a negative 2 to infinity here, but that is not correct because it's including negative 2. Um, it's including only part of the answer, actually. So it's including this part of the answer. Basically, the answers can go from negative infinity to negative 2, not include negative 2, and then go from negative 2 to positive infinity. So this is our answer choice.